Welcome to the Holy Smokes Podcast, a show about faith, friendship, fine tobacco and drink. I'm Steve Ryder, and on this episode, we are going to be featuring one of the women of Holy Smokes, Megan Hardray, who is a regular in Colorado Springs, and not only coming to Paul's house and when we meet down at Rendezvous, but you and your husband host pretty regularly during the summer. Yeah, we do. At your place. You did at your place over on the northwest side of town mm-hmm. in Rock Rimmon. And now you guys, what's the neighborhood that you guys are in right now? Uh, Sunset Mesa. Sunset Mesa, which yep. is kind of northeast ish, yeah. northeast ish, north ish, yeah. cover to springs. And so, uh, Megan, our first question that we always open the show with is what you smoking? All right. So I am smoking a Dolce Vita and it's the Barber Pole and it's fairly light, um, pretty tasty, fairly inexpensive cigar. Nice. And I have a Cohiba Nicaragua that I got in a pack from Cigar Bid. Five of these, five Rocky Patels, five Undercrowns and five CAO Flatheads or Fatheads, whichever it is. I forget which it is. All four of these sticks have been fantastic. So, Megan, not a lot of women show up to Holy Smokes. True. But we do have a few that come pretty regularly or semi-regularly. I think it's good for the community to have some women around that are coming regularly. Yeah, who else brings the baked goods if not us? Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, it's not just baked goods, but it's also, <laughs> we, we, we need a little estrogen to, to offset our testosterone. True story. And so... Uh, Megan, tell us your story. Yeah, so I am a only child, and I have four boys, ranging from the age of six to twelve, and it's a wild ride. <laughs> My house is never quiet. It's always an adventure. It's never boring, but it's fabulous. But I grew up in a home in Portland, Oregon, that was not a Christian home. And I had a great childhood, but it got a little rough when my parents divorced my senior year of high school, Mm. which kind of threw me into a crazy loop of depression at that point. In walked my husband at that point when I was in college. I met him in December of my freshman year. He was also a freshman. And where were you going to to uh, school? Southern Oregon University, which is in Ashland, Oregon. They say it's where the palm meets the pine. Really? Yes. It's a, it's a great school. Great beautiful little area. So we met there and man, I was not in a healthy spot. I didn't obviously know the Lord. Um, he wasn't necessarily walking with the Lord. And so it was a mess. It was exactly how you picture it, you know, arguing. And so many times he would storm away after me screaming at him. Um, and this is going to be a theme ongoing. You know, I was, I was mean. I was just, I was, not healthy. And I think that that's just a reflection of not walking with the Lord. Right. And so, um, fast forward a little bit, a uh, couple months, three months after we met, he proposed. What? I know. Right. He, uh, he played guitar outside my, uh, dorm room door for months, just, Hey, playing these songs over and over again. And finally I said, go away. You're stalking me. And he <laughs> left. He left. And then I realized that I missed him. So I tracked him down and shortly after we were engaged, right? So we spent the next three years living together, which I will not recommend to my boys. And then in, let's see, it was February of 2002. He led me to the Lord on our living room floor. And I was a broken woman. I was alone. I had no friends that were just solid, caring friends, you know, those 2 a.m. friends that you could call Mm -hmm. and really say, Hey, I'm, I need somebody. I was the kind of, and and this is embarrassing, but I'm going to share it because that's why we're here. Right. Um, he would want to go out and do things at night with friends and stuff like that. And I would literally scream and pull my hair. I was I was alone and scared and scared of being abandoned because that's what I was walking through with my parents. You know, they were divorcing and I was in the middle of it and it was messy still Mm. those years later. Right. Mm. So he led me to the Lord. We started going to a church in that area. I was baptized and I didn't at that point have a ton of mentorship. 
you know, which I feel like is super important when you're new to the Lord. I didn't really get involved in a lot of things. So I felt like those unhealthy habits carried on. At that point, I was still roughly smoking a pack a day of cigarettes. It was just unhealthy. So we ended up graduating from college, thank goodness, and uh, moving to Las Vegas for a couple of years, trying to move there to minister to my family. Mm-hmm. In that time, my grandmother came to know the Lord. Um, my uncle did. It was great. But the market in 2007, while we were living there, tanked, as we all know that well. And so through some closed doors, we ended up in Colorado Springs. But right before we left Las Vegas, we had our oldest son. And we also decided that that was not a great place to raise a young man. And so uh, the Lord led us here to Colorado Springs and we haven't looked back. Mm -hmm. It's been incredible. But we were still, you know, I mean, that's our what, mid mid twenties, late twenties at that point, searching, just searching and searching and searching. And I think my relationship with the Lord had grown, but I didn't know what it meant to really fall behind. And I say that very loosely, but, and let my husband lead. Uh, I think that can be interpreted a lot of different ways in the Mm -hmm. church, but we're both very strong personalities. We're both (laughs) extroverts. Um, If you look at the Myers-Briggs, you know, we're, (laughs) we butt heads and uh, we're both very different, but we're both very strong personalities. And so I didn't know how to let him lead in a godly woman way. And truthfully, I'm not sure if he knew how to lead. And so uh, here we were just fumbling through life. Uh, We ended up having more boys at that point ending it for how much of a shock was that to you (laughs) an only child yeah to see this ball of energy right and testosterone and then multiply it times two and then times three and then times four yeah and number four was a total surprise right so it was crazy but now hindsight i look back and god is still molding my heart with these boys and teaching me so much i have no idea what i'm doing some days it's like and even the sibling balance i don't have a sibling to say oh that's that's normal you know i did that with my brother or sister i don't and so just trying to navigate that and saying oh yeah that's normal as kids because my household was fairly quiet as an only child there's not a lot of chaos going on. And so there's some days I'm like, all right, I'm going to take 10 minutes because the volume in here is so loud <laughs> <laughs> and so crazy. And yeah, so it was a lot. So where do you take that 10 minutes? Yeah. Sometimes just in my room, close the door and it's sometimes closing the door, hiding in the bathroom. I don't know. But I think that's important to just say, okay, I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to take 10 minutes or sometimes it's a cigar on the back deck and the kids are playing and... I'll get a glass of bourbon and grab a cigar and hang out on the back deck. And it's a little longer than 10 minutes at that point, but you know. Do they do any of them ever come out and just kind of hang out with you? Because, they totally because, do. Because of the way a cigar kind of yep. slows us down. Yes. What's what's that mom sun time like? It's great. They just pile on the couch out there that we have. We have some outdoor patio furniture that's cozy and they'll hang out and it's just good. It actually, that's fun discussion time too. I really look forward to the time when I can enjoy a cigar as a rite of passage with my sons the very first time too. That's going to be super special. Do you have any idea what age you're going to start to? Well, legally it would be 18. So, right. But as parents. (laughs) As parents, you know what? I think that they need to be mature for sure. They need to know what they're doing. And, um, and part of it, sometimes they'll sit in on Holy Smokes gatherings, not the young ones, but our two older ones, Jonah and Cademan, they'll sit down and interact with our friends, but I try to coach them a little bit. And I know my husband does too. And we say, you know, you can sit and listen. This isn't a time where you dominate the conversation talking to everybody because that can be a lot, right? But as young men, these older men can offer so much for you to just listen and hang out. And they are always the guys at our house or wherever gathering we're at. I don't bring them to other houses, but if we're hosting, um, the conversation is 99.9% of the time appropriate for them to sit there, right? Yeah, totally. They're good. They're good folks, but they can learn so much from these older men simply by being around them. And I think that that helps them mature too, is learning, not just being around kids, but being around these stellar men in our lives. Mm. So you guys move out here. Yeah. You have more babies. Yep. And on the couples that smoke together episode, which I don't know if that's airing before or after this one, but if it's hasn't, if it's not in the feed, be sure to check that out when that one comes out. 
you started to kind of get plugged into Holy Smokes. Yeah. Yeah. So it got to be a point where my husband started attending, thankfully, by some amazing invites from these gentlemen who are now, they're so close to us, they're family. And so he started attending and I, I couldn't understand it at first. I'm like cigars, seriously? Like, uh, really? And I would challenge him a lot on it, you know, bringing back a lot of those old abandonment issues, you know, Mm -hmm. don't go stay home. I have four kids. You should have to take care of the kids. I've been taking care of them all day. But thankfully, I don't know, God just said enough in my heart and I could see his change. And through some building of relationships, I started attending as well. And it has been life changing in my spiritual walk. We are able to see, like you mentioned, a lot of women don't attend, but when we do, you know, we've traveled, we went on a cruise together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there was 18 of us. We've traveled to Belize with a handful of them. We have trips coming up in the next couple of months with a handful of them. So we've done life together. The Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival. Exactly. When you you first got to meet some of the women and and the husbands. Yes. And these women are incredible. You know, and we all have our faults, but really they're they're raw and they're intentional and we can see how they're living their lives and their marriages. And, And we talk about, hey, you know, we have conversations about quiet time in the morning and how important it is as couples to do it together. You know, Steve and Nellie, for example, when we travel with them. Steve and Nellie Grayson. Exactly. They're doing their quiet time. And they're intentional about that on trips too. Mm. And mm. that speaks to us. And so... What an example. Yes. And it's it's so cool. And so I think that has done a number for my walk with the Lord. But also um, when my husband started getting more intentional with Holy Smokes and his life was changing, he was able to learn how to lead, which I think is huge for a husband especially in what, in our relationship where we're so, you know, both very dominant. And so... Um, I was able to learn what does that look like as also a follower of Christ, but how to gently encourage him, follow behind, but also be his partner, sidekick. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. You know, Megan, one of the things I want. By the way, we're here with Etienne, who is also here sitting (laughs) with us. For those of you that haven't heard his voice yet. Megan, one of the things I really want you to touch on as well is um, talk a little bit more about when you started coming to what was largely a male dominated gathering at that point, I feel like it gave a license for other women to come be part of it as well. And I think you were an encouragement to these other women to get plugged into this gathering and to begin to enjoy the fellowship there. So talk a little bit about how you might have encouraged some other women to get involved. You know, it's, it's just been a life changing experience for our marriage. Um, Holy smokes has, and I'm not shy about sharing that experience. And I feel like, um, I try to share that with wives when they show up because a lot of times they'll drop in maybe once or twice when the husband starts going, or maybe they have an event downtown. So they'll come as well. And so I try to just get in there and and first of all, welcome them because in gatherings, it's really important to feel seen. And not only that with all these guys, sometimes 40 guys there, right? Um, it's important back porch or Paul's backyard or rendezvous usually doesn't have 40, but right in the summer months, it can get pretty, pretty heavy, um, in attendance. And so it's important for the wife to feel seen and that they're welcome. Cause it can feel super awkward, especially if they aren't used to that group at all or don't yeah. know anyone. Yeah. Um, so I see you and then let me share why it has made a big impact on me. And it's really cool. You're here. Um, That's awesome. yeah, because I think obviously women want friends too. Right. Yeah. And they're here trying to support their husband and what something he's excited about. Um, and so, I have to admit, I have convinced quite a few women to enjoy cigars as well and have brought them over to the dark side. So what is a good entry level for women to get into cigars? Sure. Because because a big cigar can be very intimidating. Yeah. And can be almost, some can be too strong and too robust and... And that will turn off people from cigars. If they've been handed a, an extremely robust cigar, especially a woman, they may never try cigars again because that's how they'll remember it. But I want to be careful with advising women pending what they like because I don't feel like there's 
huge stereotypes for women in cigar smoking. Just because you're a female doesn't mean you're going to naturally go for the sweet cigars. Now, I would ask them a few things like, do you typically like drinks are you drinking? Do you like sweet drinks? Things like that. And if they do, then of course, I started with an acid blondie, right? Yeah. And then our dear friend Dennis, who owns Cobalt Club in Colorado Springs, he challenged me. He's like, all right, enough smoking that. Let me give you a real cigar. Uh, (laughs) So real cigar. It's, you know, I think that would be a great starter, the sweeter ones. So they can realize that not all cigars are heavy and dark and will make you sound like a man in the next morning, but what about um, the flavored cigars? Yeah, yeah, flavored. And maybe not the the, the tiny ones. ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's some great bourbon ones, too. Those are all fantastic. Um, but, you know, just any lighter ones. The Connecticut's, those tend to be great. Um, but a shorter, it needs to be short because likely she's not going to smoke very much of it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. And it gets a lot of people in there, but I think it's the community in the end that draws them in the most. The welcoming, because I have felt like I have always been welcomed. And I have 40 brothers every time I show up that are just thrilled and I get hugs and they're glad I'm there and and the feeling's mutual. It's great. And so I think they see that too. And I hope they're encouraged in that, that they can turn around and say, you know what? Those gatherings are great for my marriage and they're great for my husband to go to. Whether she's there or not, I don't go every time. Yeah. So. So being an only child, having four boys, what has that community of men been for you as a mother Mm -hmm. and kind of helping either helping you understand your boys a little more or giving you some, you know, hope that, all right, they can eventually become this. They can eventually become a man like Paul Felitas or Steve Grison or Max Hatfield or any of the other men that, that are regulars here in the Springs. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that before. Um, and I'm not sure on the exact time, but my husband started getting um, into books. There's a great one called Raising a Modern Day Night. And it talks about how you go through these series of transformations and rituals and ceremonies as your son gets older. And this gives me hope because we are surrounded by men that love the Lord so much and they love my boys. I mean, for example, (laughs) every time Steve Grison comes over, he's fist bumping my boys. He's asking him how they are. He's looking them in the eyes. They know him. These guys know my kids. And so when we start, you know, doing those coming of age rituals, which I think are so important in a boy's life, speaking into their life and saying, I know you, you have what it takes. I'm here to support you. And even if your parents, you know, you don't want to talk to your parents, I'm here for you. That's huge. I think young men should have that. And so I have hope that through this community, you know, Jonah next year turns 13. I hope, I, I know that he will be surrounded by men who can speak into his life. And that's huge. And following my other boys after that, that's incredible. And to walk that walk with him because my husband didn't have that and how much better their life will be because they're surrounded by that. My 15 years that I worked for Dr. Dobson, I listened to so many broadcasts. I was the chief audio engineer at Focus and then helped Dr. Dobson get Family Talk started. In one of those broadcasts, I specifically remember Doc telling a story of when astronauts would come back in, there was a point at which Houston could not communicate with them. And he specifically was encouraging parents to have community around their boys and girls, but specifically around their boys that were able to speak into their lives when Houston, which is a metaphor for the parents and the home, aren't able when the kids are starting to develop that independence and they're not listening to you guys. Exactly. The the importance of having a strong youth leader, of having strong coaches. And in the case of you guys, I would assume that Steve and Paul and Max and the other yeah, men, so men, godly so many older men, men that are really yeah. almost grandfather figures for those boys to speak into their lives. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And my relationship with my father, um, was on and off. Great. He passed away suddenly, um, this past November. And so they don't have for the most part, other men in their life that would speak to them like that. 
And so what a gift. It is such a gift that they can be told that they're loved and they're valued, that they can conquer the world and that they have cheerleaders. It's huge. So Megan, what was that cigar that Dennis down at Cobalt Club introduced you to? And, and, and did that open up? a whole bunch of other cigars yeah. that you would, oh, that you started to drive. Absolutely. Yeah. That was the Perdomo champagne anniversary edition and it was phenomenal. He was right. And I, and I think it takes the pushing of sometimes someone else to say, you know what, you're, you're done. You've graduated from these <laughs> other cigars. Yeah. So I just recently saw on Facebook something about you just got certified with what, what's a bourbon yeah it's a certified bourbon steward what is that uh, yeah so the easier kind of explanation I give for those that aren't in the bourbon world is that it's very similar I would say to more of a sommelier as is to wine if you will and explain what a sommelier is for people that aren't familiar sure with that term. yeah so you're knowing a lot about the wines the regions what's involved in it the whole process really and so with bourbon same kind of deal it's the involvement of bourbon, how it's made, where it started. And I, I just created this passion in my heart for it. Well, first of all, a lot of women aren't in it. I mean, there are women who drink bourbon, yeah. sure. And there are women who smoke cigars. But for some reason, being a woman that smokes cigars, and I know a lot about bourbon, that just got me super excited. And to bring other women in too, right? And so I found out about this certification I can do. I'd like to go on and do the, uh, there's an executive bourbon steward mm. that I can do. I, ha- I have to head to Kentucky for that. Talk a little bit more about yeah. that certification and, and what does that mean? Sure. And I, I don't, I don't have any desire to do much professionally with it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's being able to sit down and create a pairing for people or um, a flight and say, you know, these bourbons stand out among other bourbons and why, or do tastings. Like for example, a cigar and bourbon tasting, I could do that. And why these cigars match with these bourbons, which is really fun. So So I could imagine when we do the conclave in, what is it, July of 2020? I think is when when we're gonna be doing it here in the Springs. Go to the Holy Smokes secret Facebook group and look in the events and you will see when that is. We have people flying in from all over the world Fantastic. Your house is going to be one of those stops, correct? Perfect. It sure is. And so I could expect when people show up to your house, you are going to have a bunch of different bourbons. Absolutely. And, let people, and kind of help explain to people the various differences. Yeah. And- yeah. It's a fascinating drink. I think uh, I get most excited about sharing about it and is because it's so much about American history too. You know, starting way back when and how women were involved in that and how that moved and and now how even more it's catching on through the United States, um, even beyond Kentucky. It's fascinating. I love sharing it with people just like cigars and it's a conversation piece always. That's awesome. Well, it's time to close this out with rapid fire questions. Hey everyone, before we get to Megan's rapid fire questions, I want to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, you. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we have visions and dreams to help take the word about Holy Smokes to the world. We also want to get out on the road and talk to other chapters around the nation, get stories recorded and build relationships. Your tax deductible donations are going to help us get there. So go to paypal.me slash holy smokes to make a donation. Again, paypal.me slash holy smokes. Now, on to Megan's rapid fire questions. Rapid fire. <laughs> fire. <laughs> All right, Megan, quick answers. Favorite cigar? Pedro 1964. Most expensive cigar you've ever smoked? I always say it's the ones I steal out of my husband's humidor. It's true. <laughs> they're They're free to me, quote unquote, but... They're usually pricey. If you could be any animal, what would you be? A cat. A cat. Hands down. All the cats. All right. So that would answer my next question. Dogs, cats, neither, or both? Cats. Okay. If you were stranded on a desert island with only one movie to watch, what would it be? Uh, Princess Bride. Princess Hands Bride. Down. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? 
I stole all the whiskey. <laughs> That's the best way to kidnap me is to drive around in a little van that says free whiskey. Most memorable cigar experience. Oh, man. Going on a cruise with 18 of our closest friends and sitting on the back of the boat until late at night with just the ocean behind us. Great cigars. Great conversation. All right. The last two. If you could have a holy smoke with anyone in history, who would your three guests be? And you can't name Jesus because so many people would answer Jesus as one of them. Yeah. Uh, Specifically my family. I do uh, just because they're so fascinating. Unfortunately, they're long dead. Uh, We have Daniel McGilvery. Norwood, Matt Gilvery, and Clara Whitney. Okay, so explain who each of those people are. That's not going to be a short answer. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, so Daniel McGilvery was... He was the first uh, missionary to what was Siam at that point. Okay. Um, Father of modern medicine over there. Helped translate the Bible. Uh, Just a real rock star of a guy. And you have a painting of him in your home, don't you? Yeah, it's actually in our inside cigar smoking... It's a shed attached to the house, but um, my husband built it up and it's incredible. And it's in there. It's gorgeous. And his son, who is Norwood McGilvery, painted it and he was a famous artist. Really? Yeah. And then the third one was? Third one's Clara Whitney, Whitney, also my family. And she is on the line of Eli Whitney. So cotton gin gentleman. So like great grandmother, great, great grandmother and yeah. ancestor in some yes, way. Yes, absolutely. And I think just, just hearing more, I let my grandmother pass away without really getting a lot of that yeah. history and just diving in to find out who I am and why. And then of course, having cigars with them. And I believe one of them used to smoke a pipe. So it's chances <laughs> are good. We could, we could have cigars. Last question. If we were to meet one year from now and I had a bottle of champagne, what? would we be celebrating? Well, my husband and I are working on a uh, top secret business idea that we're working on with some Holy Smokes friends. I'll let him share that more another time, but we would be celebrating the uh, acquisition of that business. And what would you need to get there? Yeah. You know, funding is always amazing and helpful. Um, Our goal with this is for it to be a light in the center of a city. You know, it's um, a cigar bar that we're looking into um, acquiring. And, you know, we want to see God move in a big way. It's in an excellent spot that a lot of people are close by that we know do not follow the Lord. And so to have something that brings people in the door, um, you can feel the presence of God and hopefully, Mm. you know, just, just love people well. That would be the goal for that. And, yeah, f- funding would be absolutely something we'd need. And how do people get a hold of you guys to talk a little bit more? Yeah, uh, you'd contact my husband at etn at localscut.com. That's E T I E N N E at locals, L O C A L S C U T dot com. All right, and we'll have that link in the show notes. Thanks so much. Megan, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Okay.